Welcome to Fishy Stories. Today we're talking about gear ratio. Now, although this is going to be a basic and simple example of gear ratios, as you can see from this tree, you can get way carried away from all the different stuff that you can do, what gear ratios that you may need. For right now, for this video, we're going to try to stick right here and not try to go up there. Squirrel! So, what is a 391 or a 456 gear ratio? How do you figure them out? Well, let's write it out to begin with. It's actually a 3.9121 gear. I can't spell. G E A R ratio. What does that mean? The dry shaft has to turn 3.91 turns to your tire turning one, which the true definition would be 3.9121. Same with the 456 gears, it would be 4.56 turns of the drive shaft to one turn of the tire. There are three different ways to come up and figure out what gear ratio you have in your vehicle. The first way is if you have the third member out or if you have the inspection plate off the back of it if it's not a dropout third member, like this. So the first way to check gear ratio, if you've got the third member out and you've got it where you can look at it, you can figure out your gear ratio by counting all the teeth on the ring gear. They can put a mark on one of the teeth, count them all the way around, and then count the teeth inside the pinion. Divide them two and you get your gear ratio. Most of the time you can get, find the gear ratio on the ring gear itself. I can show it to you here. As you can see here, it's written on the ring gear, on this particular ring gear, 323s. 323 to 1 gear ratio and it is an open differential. So you have to turn the tire two turns and count the drive shaft and how many times it turns to figure the gear ratio out on this one. I will show you the two other ways of finding your gear ratio a little bit later on. But first let's talk about the pros and cons of different gear ratios and what's going to work best for you. So let's say you have some really tall gears and it cruises down the highway really well, has plenty of accelerating power, can pass anybody, works pretty good. But you get into the city and traffic lights, from one traffic light to the next, it's just a dog. So you want to put some lower gears in it. Let's say you had 276 gears in there and you decide you want to put 456s in it. That's a double in the gear ratio, which means you're going to double your horsepower. Well, not really. But for simple terms, let's just say that that's how it works because it's more the torque you're gonna double, not the horsepower. But let's say you have a 318 rated at 230 horsepower. If you go from a 276 gear ratio to a 456 a gear ratio, well, you've doubled your horsepower. So now your 230 is 460. That'll let you do serious burnouts from one stoplight to the next. <laughs> Holy cow, 460 horsepower? Wow, I need some gears ratios right now. I need to go order them. Let's get on the internet and figure this out. <laughs> okay, calm down. We aren't there yet and let's explain this a little bit more. So let's say your, your 276 gears that run down the highway so good and your tachometer is reading 2400 RPM. Pretty comfortable, pretty quiet, pretty decent. Now you put 456 gears in it. Now at that same 70 miles an hour, you're turning 4,000 RPM. This ain't a freeway car anymore. This isn't very fun. It's probably not gonna be fun and you even want to take it to a drag strip. Now you're gonna wanna put it on a trailer to get there or to a car show or whatever you're gonna do with it. But it's a terrorizer on the street. It's a lot of fun. That's what you gotta decide. Do you want to have something that jumps right out off a stoplight or something that cruises comfortably and quietly down the highway? Uh, so 
you either have super low gears and you can't drive it on the freeway, or you have super high gears and it's a gutless turd on the road. Or life is all about compromise. So you decide, well, what the heck? Let's put some 391s in it, 355s. Let's say we put 391s in it. So now cruising down the highway, you're turning the 3500 RPM. Kind of high, but livable. You can still drive down the freeway and drive for an hour or two doing that. So now you can still drive it to the drag strip. It'll run decent down the drag strip and still have decent manners on the street, traffic light to traffic light. If you want to be a little bit more highway than street, then maybe 323s. These are all the decisions that you have to make. And now I'm going to show you how to do the, the second and third way of checking your gear ratio to find out what you've got so you can make the decision on what you're going to do and what gear ratio you're going to choose. Okay, if you have a locked differential, which means that both tires turn together, you have to have both tires off the ground. When you turn the tire one full revolution and count how many turns the drive shaft turns to figure out your gear ratio. So here we go. There's one. Two. Three, four, and a half. So I have 4.5 or the actual gear ratio is 4.56s. That's the rear end gear that's in this car. Now, if you have an open differential, you have to do it a little bit different. And I'll show you that now. All right, now we have an open differential. And with an open differential, you have one tire on the ground, one tire in the air. Of course, you wanna have it in neutral. And you have to turn the tire that's in the air two times and count how many times the drive shaft turns. So, here we go. There's one turn of the drive shaft. There's one turn of the tire. There's two turns of the drive shaft. There's three turns of the drive shaft. Gonna back that up, see where I was at. Okay, three turns of the drive shaft. There's a quarter of a turn. There's a half of a turn right there. Okay, so that means I've got 355s in here. Drive shaft turned three and a half turns while turning the tire two turns because it's an open differential and you have to turn the tire twice because of the spider gears turning inside double in it. So now you know how to do it three different ways to find out what gear ratio you have on your vehicle. Also, this is a four wheel drive and it's an older four wheel drive with locking hub. If you're gonna do it on this, make sure you lock both hubs in.